catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com. And we are on cruise control. My name is Buki, of course, cruising around town and, of course, seeing what's happening. And words around the tech block is that it is the easiest time in the history of mankind to make money. Like, guys, this is the easiest time, easiest period in the history of mankind to make money. And, of course, to make money, you need to have knowledge about money. You need to know about money, the earning, the spending, all of that stuff. And right now, financial literacy seems to be an essential tool for survival. When you look at how technology has greatly been contributing to poverty elevation, it's, it's indeed a survival skill right now for people to have financial literacy. Of course, there are recent trends in digitization of financial products and service, and this has helped to increase lenders and microfinancing, also giving access to capital and the numerous promising that technology is bringing into the world there are so many so many things they promise to do for us and of course bridging the gap and uplifting also when it comes to financial benefits technology is at the forefront of that so today with me on the show i've got mr aking from money africa he's a financial expert he's going to be talking about what it means what the financial literacy means in this digital age with me how can we leverage technology and of course gain financial freedom i've got mr aking on a call with me in the studio hello hey good afternoon good i'm afternoon. happy to be here good afternoon, Bucky. so glad to have you on so I usually introduce my guests, but right now I feel like I might not do enough introduction for you. Would you like to just continue from where I I just told him he's Mr. Aki, he works in Money Africa. But let us know, what do you do and how do you do what you do? Just give us some info. Okay, um, <laughs> basically, my name is Aki. I'm a financial research analyst at Money Africa. Mm-hmm. And what we do at Money Africa is basically trying to lift people out from poverty with financial literacy so we educate people about how they can be better with their finances and how they can be better managers and better like users of money and this helps to lift them out of poverty because in africa there are a lot of like we have like the highest poverty rate in the world and mm-hmm. it cuts like outside africa to the whole world to lift people out of poverty and ensure that they are better financial managers Okay, I get you, Mr. Aki, and I like what Money Africa is all about. I think I came across Money Africa on my social media page, and I was really impressed with all of the good things you guys do, and I've always been looking forward to this conversation. But before we jump into the conversation, I'd like to ask my guests three random questions before we jump into the conversation of the day. Are you good to go? All right. Okay, first question is, what's your favorite number? Uh, my favorite number is 10. 10. So why 10? <laughs> you forgot to add the billion. <laughs> so why 10? Okay, this is like a fun fact about me. I believe you know, Messi is like the best footballer in the world. So anytime I say number 10, it's just something that resonates with me. But 10 billion, on the other hand, is because I think when you're talking about financial like freedom and independence, mm-hmm. I think that's the amount of money I would want to have to know that, oh, yes, I'm actually like financially free and I don't need to work or like hustle, so to mm-hmm. speak, to be comfortable. Okay, that's 10 billion naira or 10 billion dollars or 10, 10, 10 billion, billion pounds. Dollars. Dollars. <laughs> Where's your confidence on that one? All right. So what's your relationship with money? That's the next question. Okay. My personal relationship with money. With money, yes. Okay. Hmm. That's a very, very personal question. When you talk about someone's relationship with money, mm-hmm. some people watch the word. Some people can't, so to speak, do without money. But I think money is meant to be a tool to help you achieve like other things so in life you have like greater purpose you want to achieve mm-hmm. you want to build houses you know you want to build NGOs you want to change your country do like great stuff in your community so money is that too so my personal like my relationship with money is just I see money as a tool to help me like achieve certain things money is not like the goal it's like a means to reach the goal so it's like a tool I used to like achieve greater things and just meet purpose and stuff. 
So there's a Yoruba saying, Owo ni keke in re re. So you're trying to say money is the tool you use in moving forward or achieving anything. Because yes. that's what the Yoruba meaning, the proverb, that's what it means. So that's why I could hear from what you're saying. Moving on to the next one. I'm sure you understand what I just said because your name is Aki, right? Yeah, yeah. I've Yoruba. heard the adage like, a couple of times. Yeah. Owo ni keke re And it's actually the right show to actually put in that proverb today. So the last question, which is the third random question, but not the last question on this show. What is is your unpopular opinion about technology i don't know i think all my opinions about like tech is popular okay one of my opinions about technology like you said at the beginning with the way tech is going like this is like the easiest time to make money so i just feel tech makes life easier for everyone and that's not like an unpopular opinion Mm. basically like the way things were done in the century before and now Tech just makes things very, very easy. Things that will take like one year to do, you can do it in one in one month now. And that's the beauty of tech. It just makes things easier. I like that. I like that. Because when everybody is agreeing to one thing or in unison with something, it means that that thing is good to be true. <laughs> Not too good, but it's good to be true. That means it's true. So let's move on into the conversation of the day. First, we'll start with questions around financial literacy, because when you look around Africa, there are reports that said Africa is at the bottom. When you look at financial literacy graph, they are mostly the worst in the world when it comes to financial literacy with majority of people. Africa is having over close to 1.2 billion people and you're looking at over 600 million plus people are not financially literate. So what do you have to say about financial literacy in Africa and why is it important? So start with, let me define what financial literacy is. So financial literacy is just like the understanding of like various financial skills, you know, budgeting, investing, personal financial management. You understand financial concepts such as savings, debt, and just the understanding of financial concepts and stuff. What are these concepts? Oh, the concept I listed them like budgeting, investing, income, expenses, savings. So have like an understanding of them and how they affect you as mm. a person. Okay. So, so in Africa, I know for a fact, they don't teach like financial literacy in schools and stuff. In secondary school, you never had like a subject where you said, oh, this is like a financial literacy class and stuff. Mm. So from a young age, your mentality about your finances is already formed. I think from age seven, mm. your mentality about finances is already formed. So if you're raised in, in a place where there were like bad finance habits, when you grow up, you would most likely have bad finance habits too. And then you would have to unlearn and relearn. And then when the age which you want to unlearn and relearn, you're probably in your early 30s, late 20s and stuff, which is not so late, but it's not still early. So the problem in Africa is before there were like just not enough financial literacy platforms, like places to learn about oh, financial literacy. So people just had to learn from their bad experiences with finances and stuff. So people who have now become financial literate, it is because they've learned from like bad experiences and they've been able to pull themselves out of poverty. Okay, I hear you very much talking about habit and also talking about experiences. But first, there are habits that actually poor people practice and there are habits that rich people actually practice. So what are these habits that keeps people poor before they start learning from their experience? What are these habits? First off, I think the first habit that keeps people poor is, I don't know, I, I probably don't know if it's like tautology or something, but like when you have a scarcity mindset, you think things are not going to be enough for you. So you watch the world, you just don't put yourself out there because to make money, sometimes you have to not lose money, but then you have to give money to make money. Mm-hmm. So when you have a scarcity mindset, you just feel like, oh, this little money I have, let me just keep it. Let me not use it so that it's not going to finish. But then let's give a practical illustration. Take someone that has like 10,000 Naira. And then if the person, let's say like 10 years ago, took like 1,000 Naira mm-hmm. and put it in a company like Tesla. If the person invested it in a company like Tesla, that would have been a really good return on it. The 1,000 Naira can be worth like, you know, $10,000 now. Mm-hmm. But when you have a scarcity mindset, you just be like, oh, let me just use this whole 10,000 Naira to buy food or something. And you end up being poor. Imagine you put the 1,000 Naira into an investment fund or something. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. if you get what i'm saying so the scarcity mindset it, it just makes people remain poor because they're not open to new possibilities which will bring me to the other side of how like rich people think rich people don't think about oh having money at one point they're always looking to make money that's why they can afford to lose money to make more money so if i hear you clearly you're saying one of the habits that could actually keep you poor or keep you rich is just to have a mindset of taking the risk yes I like the fact that we're talking about this because when you look at Africa, even in acceptance of what technology is doing right now, there's still a bit of skepticism around if they should totally accept this or intimidation by what technology is doing. And definitely, it's one of our habits, what we are not used to, to always shy away from it. And that brings me to investment. You talk about investment. For me, there's a popular saying that says not everybody can be an entrepreneur. And right now, you're asking Africans to go into investment. Can everyone actually go into investment? Yes, everyone. Investment is open to everyone. Everyone can go into investment, but I don't think everyone has the patience and like the the understanding to be able to because one thing about investment you have to have a long-term mindset when you're investing Mm -hmm. you you do not have to have a get quick rich syndrome or a get quick rich mindset so anybody can enter investment or investing but people do do not have the patience and like they do not want to get the basic knowledge of investing before they start so you're seeing someone who wants to invest on ten thousand and then next week they want to get hundred thousand which it's (laughs) practically not possible that's that's some um, basically i don't know yahoo well, or something i remember one time where there was this get rich quick scheme that people were sharing their money so the money moves from one person let's say it was four thousand i remember this because i was at nyc camp when my friend actually reached out to me that yo buki if you if you add four thousand era then they will send it to another person then another person will send you back two people's money making eight thousand like yeah so when i when i spoke to my friend in recent time about investment there seems to be limited knowledge around areas like this aside the get rich quick scheme there seems to be limited information around what people can actually invest in so are there options or things you'd like people to know about when it comes to investment aside the timing what are the things that they can look to invest in okay that's the beauty of technology right now in our like day and time before in previous um, ages centuries like 10 20 years ago people were not able to like get um, access to investment information so it was basically like the internet was not so blown up like this so you you needed to be working like in a bank or something or in a big financial institution to be able to know about investments and know you can actually invest your money in this and get this and then the knowledge was not like that but right now with technology and like with the internet investment knowledge is always out there for everyone and for everybody to like start investing and basically that's what we do at money africa we just um, give you like the basic knowledge of okay, these are classes of assets you can invest in, these are type of risks. So I would not want to give financial advice on radio because you can give financial advice now and then tomorrow, it can crash. We just want to give the basic knowledge. So with that knowledge, you can make decisions for yourself and not rely on anybody else to help you make these decisions. That's why we want to give out this basic knowledge to people to help them make the decisions themselves. I know about the treasury bill. I know about bonds. I know about... Well, yeah, those are like things you can invest in. Treasury bills, um, money market. You can invest in like commodities, crypto, stocks, equities, ETFs. There are a lot of things to invest in. You just need to get like the right information and personalize it to yourself because investment is a personal journey first of all you cannot take someone's portfolio and say you want to fit into it no you're going to make a mistake you have to build your own portfolio for yourself based on your life experiences and the goal you want to meet at the end of the day for this next question i want to ask you i would like to know from you would you rather earn income or passive income I would like a bit of both because, first of all, passive income is basically like your income from like investments, that's on stocks. But if you're not earning, first of all, you're not going to be able to invest in this to get your passive income. So you actually need your earned income to start investing because are you going to steal money to like start investing to get your passive income? No, you're not going to do that. Which brings me to you improving your skills and yourself, investing yourself first. To like be able to get earned income, which you can divert into stocks and you get your 
passive income. So as you continue to build and grow, you, you're getting your end income and your passive income. It gets to a point where you don't even need to like stress yourself with the end income anymore because your passive income is already enough for you. So personally for me, it's a mix of the two, end income to build passive income. And when passive income is big enough, you don't need to rely on your end income anymore. I like the fact that someone can actually do both or you can choose to go with one. So just give us some passive ways we can actually make money with the old technology revolution going around us. I heard you talk about uh, buying some Bitcoin or something. So what are the other channels that people can look at? Because to have financial freedom right now, you, you just have to have money coming from different sources. You can't rely on one source. To so start with, if you want to like generate passive income, which I've already said, um, that's like income from like stocks, ETFs, you know, your investments, basically. First of all, it's first a wise thing to get a financial expert who can give you basic get financial advice or knowledge. And that's what we do at Money Africa, financial knowledge to help you arm yourself with knowledge to be able to invest properly. And there are different apps now, examples of apps you can use to like buy stocks, um, but you don't need to go to like the Nigerian Stock Exchange or like get a broker. You can do it from your phone, Um, sign up to the Bamboo app, you know, you can sign up to the Ladder app, you can sign up to the Cowrywise, Piggy Vest, like there are a lot of apps now. Just search for a stock you want to buy, you know, do your research about it. And there's this thing um, Elon Musk said. He said, if you're investing in stocks, invest in something you believe in. Because if you invest in something you don't believe in, when there becomes like a bit of turbulence in the market, which is like a lot of business cycle, it's not going to be a smooth journey. I assure you, it's going to be turbulence and stuff. So if you invest in something that you don't believe in, when there's turbulence, you're going to be really shaky and then you pull out your money. I'll give you a practical example of when Bitcoin and the whole issue with Bitcoin. Mm. Most people are invested in Bitcoin. They, I think the first dip, they're like, ah, they cannot do it. They're losing money. They're losing money and stuff. So they pull out their money. But then after the first dip, there was the rise again. So that's how like the market is. And don't be so hasty to pull out your money. Investment is over a long term, basically. So when we, when we talk about real estate investment, how do you think it's going for Africans? Because I know when I reach out to my friends in other countries, they seem to be quite excited in having to invest in real estate. But over here, especially in Nigeria, it's a big man's game. So what are the opportunities like for people who would like to invest in maybe real estate or properties investment in real estate i know some people think that oh you must have 10 million somewhere to buy a land but um the thing with, with land is i think land is an asset that I appreciate i think that's the um, basically the only asset that I appreciate i know that oh if you buy a land now in the next 10 years you're very sure that develop the land have appreciated and it will not depreciate and land is not a depreciable asset on investment platforms i know for something like piggy vest i think their investments worth like 10,000 naira where you can invest in like or oh, um, in an estate or something and then you get your return on investment so you don't really need to have the 10 million to go and buy a land and then with all this some um, real estate comp um i know they do like promos and then they help you like break your payments and stuff so you know that oh as you're paying for this land you're investing in it and when when you buy it becomes yours it becomes your own asset and that, that's like basic investment so you don't need to have like the whole like 10 million They've already broken it down for you into mm. deposits and you can just make the deposits and just keep in so that's like your own method of investment just keep investing in it until you like you have the full land to yourself and the documents and that's your asset already mr Aki, this next question i want to relate to because you're in nigeria and i'm in nigeria and we know the current situation that we are facing right now when we talk about money before I move into the current situation, let me start around the policy. So the money policy around moving from the normal era to the e era, and of course having limited cash in circulation. What do you think about this policy and how do you foresee the future with where we're headed? So basically with technology, the world is currently moving to a cashless economy. And in as much as I understand the importance of the policy, we have to consider the peculiarity of the Nigerian system and the Nigerian economy. So if you're looking at a first class or a first world country, they have strong payment structure. You don't have to go somewhere and then your money is getting reversed. Your money is not reaching somewhere. You're not having like network issues, basically. But then with Nigeria, we're still trying to like struggle with the or the whole payment structure. There is no a solid payment structure. You're going somewhere. You're trying to use the POS. There's no network. So like these are like the peculiarities that are currently affecting cashless economic policy. Mm-hmm. 
it is a very, very good policy for the economy because a cashless economy just basically produces corruption and stuff. You know, you're, you're able to properly track money from one place to another. But then with the peculiarities of the Nigerian system, where there is no strong payment structure. Yeah. So over time, if you can get like the strong payment structure and then the payment structure becomes really really sound and really good okay so with all of this happening one thing that connects everybody is even even the developed country they have at some point had a financial crisis and they've dealt with inflation and of course recession so what do you think we as african can do to prepare ourselves for all of this financial crisis recession inflation what do we need to do so this is just like basic economic turbulence you're trying to ask me how you can navigate economic turbulence yes. and in africa which is something we have not done too well first of all i think as individuals we should always have like an emergency fund because you might have like signs when recession is coming but you don't know when it's going to hit so in order to be safe always have like a safety net have a savings cushion in place in case of unexpected economic downturn or something mm-hmm. you always have something to fall back on and you're not helpless it just happens basically and then in the twinkle of an eye you just realize that the whole world there's recession there's inflation everywhere something you're buying for 100 naira is now like 500 mm-hmm. but if you had like an emergency fund something that was just like there you know for like emergencies like this it would be easier i'm not saying you won't feel the effect but to not affect you as much as it would have if you did not have an emergency fund also another thing is we should reduce debt the amount of debts we have i don't know in africa i just think I don't know, we just have like a debt problem. People <laughs> always and, <laughs> Yeah, something like that. And debt debt is not a bad yeah. thing. People borrow money, it's not like a bad thing. Nations borrow money. But then when you're borrowing to spend mm. and I think that is what like most Africans do. You're borrowing to, you know, go for OM bears, you're borrowing to take your babe out. It really doesn't like make sense because when there's an like, economic crisis, the person you borrow money from, mm-hmm. they want to get their money back because they need to soften the effects of the economic issues on them. But if you're borrowing to invest, when you borrow the money, when you get your returns on investment, you can pay back debt and get your money back. So we need to reduce unnecessary debt. I have just one more question for you before we go because time time is ticking fast. So for me, I'd like to know maybe are there books because I heard you talk about knowledge, like Africans should build knowledge, financial knowledge. So how how can they lay their hands on this knowledge? How can they get it? And when they get it, what should they do with it? First things first, I think one key thing you can do is join a community. The importance of a community is even at times when it gets tough and then you really tired of, you know, sometimes getting knowledge can be tiring. But then if you're in a community and you're with people that have like the same goal as you, it becomes easier to achieve your goal and to get this knowledge. And that is one key thing we do at Money Africa. We have like a community to help push people to achieving their goals. Okay, you want to build an emergency fund. You want to learn how to invest in stocks. You want to build a pension plan. We give you this knowledge and then we push you to reaching your goals. So joining a community that have like a similar goal, that you have is very very helpful and then also their books that's why the internet and technology is really important their books you can read them rich dad poor dad you know intelligent investor their books everywhere you know psychology of money that you can read and you don't even have to buy the books you can go to the internet you check for pdfdrive.com you you can probably get like the e-copy of the book and read it and you know one thing is it's not just to get knowledge knowledge without action is basically useless Mm -hmm. so if you get this knowledge you have to act on it you read something from psychology of money you have to push yourself to act on it which is why community is good so when you get this knowledge in community they always want you to act on it and then you have like accountability partners people that will push you oh i've done this are you doing this and stuff like that and in the end you, you just find out that over time you're getting your financial independence and your financial freedom. All right. Thank you very much for this. Because community actually seems to be really good. They hold you to a standard for yourself. And of course, if that community, the standard that they are on is not what you're on. It's better to go find your like mind. So I didn't know that community could actually be one key thing when it comes to getting financial knowledge. But I, I like that one. So before you run off, I'd like you to debunk one money myth that Africans have 
that you think na na you push clear that off your mind because blocking access to money to making money i don't know i've heard it so much before mm-hmm. and then it's quite weird to me that only um was the word some select people are meant to have like um a certain amount of money only some select people are meant to be millionaires or billionaires and i think some people are just really satisfied with where they are okay which like can be your personal destiny but then when it now begins to build a mindset and then it a hovering around your head where you cannot push forward or like look to attain more because you feel that oh that is not for you oh do that's like for like white people it's just white people that like can do tech and make money or can do stuff and make money no this money is to be made like money money is there for everyone to be made you just need to you know push yourself and work towards it and if if you can conceive it in your mind you can achieve it in real life all right so let's wrap up on money africa what are you guys up to what should people should be looking forward to because most times i stock your page and i'm getting all of this great information i would say money africa has helped me in my self saving culture uh they keep breaking things down for me but this is me i would like you from from the table of money africa tell us what you guys are about and what you guys aim to achieve and of course the year has just started it's just second month in the year what are you guys looking forward to attaining for the year 2023 first of all money africa is is an edtech platform that just helps people with financial literacy and we want to be um, the biggest financial literacy platform in in africa and in the world basically to help it, it's going it's going really good it's going really good how many how many countries have you guys been able to cover in africa i, I can't give you like an exact number but i know we're in nigeria we're in ghana we're in kenya and then we we have people reaching us from kenya and oh like oh we're seeing what you're doing and we would like you to reach out to other people in our country and help us like bring them out of poverty back to my myth i don't know africans just believe that oh i don't know probably from the slave trade that oh they're meant to be poor no you can have an african as like the richest man in the world so you can reach out to money africa on instagram you know send a dm to us join our community and this is the beginning of the year and with the way the nigerian economy is a lot of people are really really oh it was going to happen and just send us a dm reach out to us you know and then you join our community and then you get armed with this financial knowledge and you can start making informed decisions for yourself all right thank you mr aki any last word you'd like to give to people before you go off anything you like people to know okay so um Basically I'll just leave this before I go. Financial freedom is a lifelong journey mm-hmm. and for you to start you have to be armed with like basic knowledge of finances but sometimes along the road the journey may become tough and that's how life is but if you set your mind on it and if you keep striving to be financially independent and free you're going to achieve it and then at the end people are just going to be like oh you you had it all figured out but then they don't know the story behind and it's never too late to start you can decide to start now and in years time you're financially independent and free thank you so much mr king it's been wonderful happy it's a pleasure to be here it's really 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 nice to be here okay we look forward to doing more stuff with money africa i know to have you guys come through on any of our show would that be possible bye <laughs> just putting you on the spot thank you so much for your time do have yourself a wonderful wonderful evening all right you too and that's it guys you guys have heard a lot of knowledge right there on the table for you to pick and choose we're stacking we've gone through investment we've gone through habits we've gone through different areas that might be a bit not so clear to you wondering how the rich are still rich and the poor are getting poorer it's all about your money habits it's all about the knowledge you have about money and of course what are you doing with money so just think about everything you've heard let it marinate and of course pick and choose what is going to work for you this is the year 2023 and it's all about making money making good money making legal money making legitimate money it's all about making money and expanding your financial sources i mean i want to have 100 streams of income <laughs> just kidding i need something i can focus on concentrate on and build 
and of course with the way things are looking right now i'm trying to tighten my belt so that when the inflation really goes as high as becomes unbearable i can actually withstand the wind yes 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 so we're still on cruise control and my name is bookie of course i've got great music to play for you guys right now this is the one by brimo go hard because 2023 we're going hard and we are not leaving any money on the table not at all thanks for listening and don't forget to catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com